This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your one-stop shop for creating and managing your own online brand, but more about that later in the video. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. This video has been in the works for a little bit of time, not a super amount of time, but a little bit of time. And I can't believe I haven't done it. I think it's just been sat there and it's kind of skipped my mind a little bit. But today, as you might be able to see from the title, I would like to take you through my top 10 silver plants. I was going to say blue plants, but not all of them are blue. So we'll call it blue slash silver. There's kind of a mix. So if that interests you, then keep on watching. These are in no particular order, but the first plant I want to talk about today is the Amedrium Medium Blue or Amedrium Medium Silver. Now it does go by both names. It really kind of depends on who you talk to or who's got it listed for sale. It literally, it could be both. So if you're looking for it, it goes by both. It has been known, or at least the green version has been known as, I think it's Spider-Man Monstera. It's got nothing to do with Monstera at all. So again, if you're searching, please bear that in mind. But it's a really, really nice one. Now, I have found that the green version is easier to grow than the silver or bluey version, but that shouldn't really stop you. I think the main problem with this plant is just the runners, and you either love it or you hate it. This plant would rather send out a hell of a lot of runners than actually grow normally. A little bit like Monstera Oblica, it is prone to doing it, or what's happened to my plant is it sends out like a good meter of runner and you're just coiling around your moss pole, and then all of a sudden it'll give you a leaf. But now you have all this runner coiled around that you can't really cut because it's decided to grow again. I think mine's decided to start growing as it reaches the top of the moss pole, which is real nice from not growing prior. I'm not sure if I have a picture of my personal plant and that's because my personal plant is actually two plants mixed together. It is the green version mixed with the blue version. I will try and find an image. If not, no sweat. It didn't exactly look amazing anyway last time I checked because it sat in the unit and it's not growing very well, which leads me to tell you that these plants don't really grow the best. Best. I think they're an acquired taste and it, it's it's really something that you should get if you can be bothered with the whole runner thing and sometimes it will grow and sometimes it won't. Nonetheless, it's a super pretty plant to look at. I think if you just want to buy this, then maybe do your research. I think it's quite affordable for what it's worth. I'm not completely in the loop on that because I'm not really selling them at the minute, even though I actually have quite a lot, but I don't think it's expensive. So if you want to look for it and you want to give it a go, be my guest, the green is easier. But for the sake of this video, I'd like to talk about the silver one because it is very, very pretty, especially, especially when it gets going. Coming in next, we have the Syngonium Moonshine. Now, I think it is different from the Syngonium Moonlight. I can see both on Google. I actually have my phone in front of me at the moment, but I think they are different. If they are not different, guys, please do let me know in the comments. As you know, I will not be offended, but it seems to be different anyway. So we're going to go with the Syngonium Moonshine because I believed it was just a little bit brighter and a little bit more silvery, could you say? I think this is pretty affordable. In fact, I think it's very affordable for a Syngonium. I think it's very nice. And I don't often see it in collections. And of course, it's got that wonderful whitish, silverish color. I'm not seeing much of a variation in color on Google Images, which probably tells me that it's, I hope, not a light thing. So you've got to be careful with some of this stuff. I think that is just how the plant is. It's very, very bright. I suspect the more light you give it, the brighter it will be, because that tends to happen even with things that you wouldn't think are affected by that. But it seems really, really nice. And I quite like that. I would actually have that for myself. I have a Syngonium Milk Confetti, which is basically this kind of Syngonium, but it has a few pink patches on it, which is really nice. But I like this and I would have this. So I thought I would pop that on the list for you because it's a Syngonium and who doesn't love Syngonium, honestly? They're not all created equal, but a lot of the time they're really easy to propagate and they're just such a good beginner plant and they look great. You can grow them up. You can even trail them. Not a lot of people tend to do that, but you can if you want to. Or you can just keep pruning them, either propagating them or literally even throwing out the bits that you don't want and just keep them in a little bush. So they're quite a versatile plant that way. They can kind of do what you want them to do. So I quite like that and I thought I would pop that in there because it's quite a good looking one actually as far as Syngonium go. If you've never dealt with Syngonium before and you want to know a bit more about them, I do have a Syngonium rare plant index on my channel. I will link that down for you below, but basically it takes you through most Syngonium, not all Syngonium, but most Syngonium and it lists them from basically common to very rare, like very, very rare and it gives them a longer scale. So if that interests you, then please feel free to look below for that. Right, moving on, we have a classic. A classic, a lot of people own this, I own this, 
I own it in a really big pot and that's mainly because I took loads of cuttings and put it together. Now that would be the Cebu Blue Pothos, I can't speak today, and in the UK that's not as easy to get. Now I'm not saying it's rare because I don't think it is. I think it's probably uncommon, but you can get cuttings of it, no problem, but I'm not sure how easy it is to get big full plants. What you're probably going to have to do is either buy one cutting and start it from that and keep cutting and replanting, or you buy several cuttings and do it that way. I have a lovely big pot, but that is basically built from a hell of a lot of cuttings that I think I just didn't, I just stopped selling them in the shop because they didn't really have enough value to basically make it worth it to ship it overseas and stuff. And I know you guys in America already have them. So I stopped selling them and I just planted them all together and now it's a bush. But it's a lovely, lovely, lovely plant. And Epipremnum are super, super, super easy plants. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. Again, I should probably do an Epipremnum red plant index actually. So let me know if you want that. I think it's probably about time we did that. Cebu blue is lovely. Be careful because you can have Epipremnum penatum that is not Cebu blue. And I've been caught out by that before. So you need to, it needs to look silvery blue to make sure it is what you think it is but I don't think you should have too much trouble anyway like with everything it depends where you are in the world but I think it's pretty accessible for a plant now so that's great news oh the next one i love this plant so much i love this plant so much i would consider getting another one of these i did put two of these in the living wall not long after we planted it all up if you watch my documentary you will know they looked great they hated 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 the wall they hated the lecker they hated literally everything and they died and they were huge, by the way. Their root mass was like a dinner plate. It was massive. And that is the blue star fern. The blue star fern is so pretty. And it is kind of blue, right? I know this video is like silver and blue. A lot of the plants on here I can see are kind of on the silver side. This is definitely on the bluer side, I would say, personally, for sure. In fact, it's the bluest so far. The great news is, especially if you're in the UK, this stuff's easy to get. And you don't have to get a big pot of it. You can get a smaller pot of it. It's very, very easy to get. You should find it in garden centers. And it's an easy, fern it's nothing like a lot of the other ferns you know when you think of fern you think of just crispiness leaves dropping off it's not like a boston fern for example that fern i don't know if i could take care of it now i certainly couldn't you know a few years ago so i'm not gonna attempt that but the blue star fern is absolutely gorgeous and if you're in your local garden center i advise you to have a look at it because it's really really nice i don't know maybe it's just me i have a thing for ferns I love ferns, but it is one of my favorites. And it's because of the way it looks. It's really nice to have a super unique looking plant for a really affordable price. I think that's awesome. So the blue star fern definitely gets my vote. Ah, speaking of ferns, the next fern on my list is, this is actually blue. And when I, I know I've just talked about the blue star fern and I've told you that it's really blue. When it comes to this fern, that don't even apply. This fern like is really blue. And I know I just said that before, but this fern is like, it's really blue. If you're looking for an easy way to build and run your own website, then look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. I love how I can create a really cohesive theme across my website without much effort at all. By using the site styles panel, I can customize how I want all of my fonts and buttons to look across the entire website, as well as the color scheme. So basically any change I make in here is reflected reflected across the whole website instantly. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it for voiceover, Kaylee. Back to the video. And fans of the channel will know probably exactly what I'm talking about. It is the Microsorum Thailandicum, also known, I think, as like the oil. Is it the oil fern? Blue oil fern? Some sort of oil in the name. And it gets its name because it, it does kind of look like oil slick, the way it, when oil hits the light, it's got that bluey, greeny, weird, you know, sort of petroly tinge to it. Oh, guys, it's great. It's just the greatest fern. I'm going to tell you that I think they're not so bad to look after, providing you get an established one. I think they're fine. I've had some from, you may have seen them, just, just tiny little things like about this tall, about a root ball, like a thumb, literally, and they have not done so well. They haven't died, don't get me wrong. You know, they're not quick to grow more roots. So I'm not 
I don't want to advise too much on the care on those because I'm not knowledgeable enough. But what I can tell you, and you can probably see from the photograph, is that these things are amazing. The leaves of the fern as well, if you're worried about things like that, the leaves of the fern are very, very similar to the leaves of a Hoya. If you felt the leaves on a lot of different Hoya, it's kind of like that, actually. They don't really flex. You can't bend them or anything. It might look that way, but you can't. They're kind of rigid. If you try to bend them, kind of like a Hoya leaf, you know, it, it would snap. It's very, very waxy like that. But, oh, if you can get your hands on one, mmm, they're lovely. I don't know what makes them super blue. It could be heat, it could be light. Nine times out of ten, I'm inclined to think it's heat. I have got a few of them in the shop that are much larger than the one I have. They're larger than the one in the photograph. And they are not as blue. And I suspect over time they will become way more blue. So if you know exactly what makes them bluer, then please feel free to leave a comment. I suspect heat. I'm going with heat right now, but honestly, it's absolutely amazing. And whenever I put it on my channel, it's normally a bit of a showstopper. So I do think there is some value there. I don't think it's like a blue star fern. I think there's a lot more money to them, but I think it's really, really worth it. Honestly, it's so worth it. If you can't tell from the picture how cool it is, there's nothing more I can do for you because it's just, ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Going back to some more silver, we have the Alocasia Silver Dragon. And I do have one of these. Again, it's comboed in a pot with a Alocasia Renigula Black Velvet. So it's a bit of silver in the pot, a bit of black in the pot. They're not doing very well together. I probably should just move them. I did it save space, which I do recommend if you want to do it. Feel free, you know. But it's a nice plant. And at one point it was worth a lot of money and it's really come down. Same thing as the Dragon Scale, by the way, if you're looking for a blue one, that's really nice as well. They've come down a lot in value, so I think they're quite affordable. I don't think you should struggle. I think generally if you search for it on the internet, even just through Google, you should find some. But they're a really nice alocasia. They're very meaty. They're not like a, you know, a, an alocasia with really long petioles and thin leaves. They're very, very meaty. Again, feel a bit like a Hoya on steroids, to be honest. They're very, very, very meaty and succulent. Almost mushroom-like sometimes, I think. So if you like that kind of thing, this might be a really nice one for you. They are a lot more forgiving with watering than a lot of more standard taller alocasias are as well. So if that's something you struggle with, then maybe you might want to give that a go. I do like that plant. And as I say, I haven't really given mine enough love. We should probably do something about that, but... Really a nice plant. Ah, this one is a classic, and you cannot do this video without putting this plant on the list, and that is the Philodendron Hastatum, not Philodendron Subhastatum. That is a totally different plant. FYI, for your information, the Philodendron Subhastatum is very green looking, and the party is underneath the leaf. So underneath the leaf, there is this beautiful flush of red, and you can see all the veins in the leaf. That's what a subhastatum is. Think sub as in submarine. And hastatum is also known as silver sword. And it is a beautiful silver plant. Is it the most silver one on this list? I would probably say yeah, to be honest. The leaves are very, very glossy as well. So not only are they silver, but unlike, say, the alocasia silver dragon that is very matte in texture, this one will reflect the light a lot. So you get even more from it. There's also variegated ones coming out on the market at the minute. They are really, really nice. Got to say they are beautiful. A good special specimen. Oof, really good. But just the standard silver sword is absolutely stunning. I do have one on my living wall. And honestly, it's tough as nails. It's tough as nails. It's not doing so well at the minute, but nothing on the living wall is because the light has gone down and nobody wants to pay the energy prices of grow lights fired at the wall. So at the minute, all my living wall is just not doing great. But the, the silver sword is definitely a contender for being a very, very hardy houseplant. And that again is why they're in garden centers. So if you like the look of that one, it's really nice. You will probably need a pool for it because it's a climber. If you pass a garden center and it's in there and you haven't seen one, Go have a little nosy because it's probably there. Every country is different, but I'm pretty sure you'll find it. It's been around for a long, long, long time in garden centers, like years at this point. So it should be quite easy to find. Skindapsis Silver Hero or Skindapsis Platinum. Now these are, to my knowledge and research, these are two different plants. However, they look so similar. I've just grouped them together. And to be honest, there's a lot of skin dapsis generally that will give you silver vibes. So it doesn't have to be something that's all silver. A lot of skin dapsis are, you know, like a dark green with loads of still silver sort of speckles on them. That's fine. If you want to go for that, that's cool. But I'm putting these in because they are a little bit more fitting with the title, right? They are really silver. So if you're looking for something really, really silvery, these are good. I have the Platinum. I do believe. It's a great plant. It sizes up really nice, actually, even though it's trailing, it's sizing up really well. Grows in lecker fine. Doesn't really seem to care. The only thing I'll say is it doesn't grow very quickly. 
So although it sizes up and it gives me what I want, it don't grow quickly. That's not really a problem for me and it shouldn't be a problem for you if you're already full up on plants. But if you're trying to build a really big, beautiful plant, just know that you'd be waiting a lot longer. Or if you want to sell cuttings, you're waiting a lot longer. Unlike a lot of plants, the Skindapsis, or at least this one, does seem to grow a vine before it will send off leaves. And that's done it in good light, so I think it's just a trait of Skindapsis. I don't have a lot of experience with Skindapsis generally, guys. I don't know why, I just haven't. I think they're not often sold. I think it's, unless it's the, the bog standard Skindapsis that's out there, you don't really see any others. So I don't have a ton of experience, but that's what I can tell you. If you want something that's silver and it's great, but it's really quick growing like a weed, I would go for the Epipremnum Cebu Blue if you want something hanging that's nice. But the Skindapsis is nice because the leaf shape is a little bit more heart-shaped. It's a bit more pleasant. It's a little bit fatter and it's just nice. Whereas the Cebu, it's lovely, it just has a very distinct shape and you either love it or you hate it. Personally, I love it, but that's a really, really nice one to go for. It's not in garden centres, but I don't think it's too difficult to find. I think if you're looking for a cutting, you're going to find a couple of leaves. I don't think you're going to find a whole branch, but it's definitely one of my favourites. Honestly, it's, it's kind of worth it. I really like mine. It's just, you are better off just giving it what it needs, sticking it in a self-watering pot and just going about your life for three to six months, and then coming back and going, oh, it's grown, cool, because that's probably what you're going to get out of it. Next up, we have a plant that I've actually never had at the shop. Do you know that? I've never had it. I've never bought it in. I don't know why. This is just not my favorite plant, guys. And that is the Philodendron Brantianum. Can't say it very well, but it is a very nice silvery heart-shaped Philodendron. I don't know why I don't like it. I think it's more the way the silver presents. I'm, I'm not about the way that it's kind of, I can't even describe that. It's, it's sort of splashed up, but it looks a bit messy. So I am going to whiz this past this one really quickly because I don't feel like I can tell you anything constructive about it other than to show you a picture, to tell you that I don't think it's expensive. Give me one moment. No, very affordable, I would say. It's on the upper end of affordable, but it is very affordable. You get a really nice little bush out of it. I'm seeing a few here. There's some growing up. Uh, looks like a tree, but they, they look nice. I just don't think they're for me. I think I would favor them more if it could become a trailing plant. Let me know what you think about that. I will just whiz over that because I don't want to be spouting a load of crap about stuff I don't know anything about, which I realize I kind of do that on the daily, but a bit too far when I've never even bought the plant, right? So next on the list, we have, I don't think it's full pastazanum, but this is philodendron pastazanum silver. And that is basically what it was sold to me as. I do have a few in the shop. They behave a lot like pastazanum, only I would say that the petioles are shorter. They're not quite as gangly as a normal pastazanum. So clearly either they're a mutation from pastazanum or they're hybridized, which I do sort of suspect they are. Not fully sure. Haven't done any research on them prior to this video, guys. It's been one of them weeks, but I think that's what it is anyway. Really nice plants though. Really, really nice plants. And they grow absolutely gorgeous. They really do. This is one of my favorite plants. I do have a few. I don't think they're not selling amazingly. I don't think they're flying out or anything like that, but they're really, really nice plants. And I think they're available. When I say available, again, it's not a garden center thing. It is like a private seller thing. But if it's something that you like the look of, I do think you should look it up because these plants are so easy. Like, literally, they would grow in mud. Like, there is just no problem with these. They grow so well. They size up beautifully, like a lot of crawlers tend to, because it is a crawler. I can't really say anything bad about it. It's quite impressive. A lot of you that follow the channel on a regular basis will probably have seen my update with my feed on my philodendron pastas on them, white or silver or whatever you want to call it. Um, and it, it's looking great. So I do recommend them. In my limited knowledge about the plant, I can recommend them based on how they look, their care, the speed of growth, and just overall satisfaction rating. But obviously, if you don't like crawlers, then maybe you don't want this one. Last on the list is something that I did not know existed. And I showed you guys on a few videos back and y'all were loving it. And I had loads of requests in the shop for me to sort of sell them before they were actually out yet. Because I'd only bought a few in and I, I couldn't really find any more. I'm going to say what the plant is. That could technically be subject to change if by some pure chance it's the wrong ID. But the last plant I want to talk to you about today is the Spathophyllum ghost. I don't know the proper name for this plant, guys, because I can't find enough on it. It's It seems to just be originating from overseas and I don't know much. But it's really weird because the way this plant grows, it kind of scares the shit out of you a little bit because it grows in and the leaf comes in like a greeny yellow colour. Very odd. Very odd indeed. But it hardens off to like a ghostly grey silvery 
colour. Not white, not like a Florida ghost, but it, it hardens off like really grain minty, kind of like the picture. So you could call it a mint, you could call it a silver, but the way it grows does startle you a little bit because it's not what you expect at all. But it, it's a really pleasant plant and I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure it is obviously a spathophyllum. They do seem very easy though. They definitely seem something like I would recommend. They're so hardy. They seem to pop actually quicker than a lot of the regular spathophyllum do which I was kind of surprised about. I mean, I was growing them to sort of get them hardy enough ready to sell, and I had to do a round the other week propagating them and just taking all the pups off, which is unusual because I've had a big spathophyllum for a long time, and there's been like baby pups around the base of them that are like one inch tall, and they just refuse to grow. They refuse to grow, and yet these things are just sprouting pups like no tomorrow. So that's kind of cool. I do recommend this plant if you can get your hands on it. I absolutely love them, and I am 100% saving them for my house because I think it would be really 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 nice to see a monster sized one because obviously the ones I've got are this big so they're about I don't know from including the pot they're about six inches tall they're not very big at all so if you can find one of these guys I really suggest you get one because honestly if they pop that quickly you can sell off the pups and make some cash because they're I don't want to say they're in high demand I'm just saying the feedback I've had on them is that a lot of people are after them but really really successful plant so far for me anyway and I can't get enough of them in so that was my top 10 blue slash silver plants. A little bit of both in there. Some of them are very affordable. Some of them are less affordable. But looking at this list, there's nothing that is insane. There's nothing that's hundreds of dollars or hundreds of pounds or hundreds of euros. It's all kept pretty chill. I think the top end is low triple digits for these plants. So you shouldn't have too many problems. Again, it does depend on where you are in the world but I think you're all right with this one. I wanted to keep something a little bit more easygoing, a little bit more, you know, stuff that everyone could enjoy. So let me know what you think about that. Leave a comment on anything I've mentioned. If it's the spathophyllum, the blue star fern, anything. Do you own any of these plants in these lists? Like, do you rank them? Do you rate them? Is there a plant on this list where you just think, oh my God, I got it because I thought it was just everything and it turns out it's just not. I hate him. I hate them now. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It helps me out a lot. It lets me know that you enjoy my content and if you haven't already subscribed then please feel free to do so. Links to things such as the Syngonium Rare Plant Index are down below. Thank you very much for watching this video guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!